Hi, and welcome to the 12 Days of Christmas. Who knows what episode it is? It's one of them. One of those days. It's certainly the one your podcast player says. Yeah, like, the player knows. We don't know, but you know. If you're listening to this, you know something that we don't know right now. Isn't that fascinating? It, it, it totally is. So. It, it, the, the silence denoted how clearly unfascinating this fact is. I'm sorry, I got a text message and I forgot we don't have Simon to fill the gap on this right now. Uh, so. fair, fair enough. These things happen. So, this is uh, allegedly supposed to be the Star Wars episode, but we'll kind of just talk about whatever. Mostly the comics, and then maybe we'll talk about comics in general. We're just going to have a chat. You know, we're just going to have a little little sit-down, little talk. You know, one of those. Mm. Yep, we're going to have a little, little chat about some uh, uh, comic books. I mean, we're going to talk about Star Wars comic books, but we're not going to talk about the Star Wars movie because, like, you know... Uh, everyone's tired of it already and it hasn't come out for another month yeah and like by the time this episode comes out the movie might not even be out yet it's coming out super super late yeah I think like what what is it that uh, um, let's see it at is like the 22nd or something like that yeah yeah it's, it's really late in the month mm-hmm. so we're not going to talk about the movie you're gonna be it's gonna be a fever pitch by the time this episode comes out or even afterwards but it, it's still gonna be you're gonna want to hear something else so we're gonna talk about some comics that you probably haven't heard of and if you haven't heard about them you're about to hear about them it's me the manimal man for meals and join me on this thrilling occasion it is corin it is me and over there is the guy with the deep deep voice it's manimal uh, is that me or is it someone else? I don't know. It, it's you. Oh, I have a deep voice. I I, I I never knew this whole time. But yeah, I guess suppose if, if uh, we're going to talk about the comics, we've got to get started somewhere. So I've been reading the comics since issue three. And if I'm not mistaken, they started right at the beginning of 2015. And it was kind of like the big thing, like, ooh, they're back to Marvel comics and all this shit. And by now they're on... Uh, issues 74 mm-hmm. and they started the basic monthly thing but now now comics have kind of changed and uh, Marvel DC a lot of them are releasing uh, two comics a month instead <laughs> so I mean it just seems to me like it's a it's a race to issue 100 or something it, I don't it know. very well could be that's kind of where we're at I'm, I, uh, I follow the uh, collection uh, arcs volumes whatever you want to call them when graphic you break novels. it down, the graphic novels, which is up to 67. Mm-hmm. So that's the, basically uh, the first. Well, that's a. I don't know how many story arcs that covers, like two or three. Um, or two. Two story arcs. If you consider. There's like two m- main story arcs, but there was a lot of meandering happening at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And each so, uh, each graphic novel has like its own little uh, episode, if you want to call it that. Yeah, there's many arcs within the greater arc. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it's kind of hard to talk about the early stuff because of memory. But I would say when this comic came out, it was thrilling. Like when the when I read the first issue, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Because you know it was before the Force Awakens came out and everything, so it was still like. Well, even when The Force Awakens came out, it was still, like, excitement time. And yeah. re- reading the first issue with that Tim's sausage breakfast sandwich and a, probably an ice cap and everything, and then you open the comic and it's just boom in your face, Star Wars. You're just like, oh, shit, you know? It was it was a real, real thrilling moment. And then the comic itself was real good. Like, I think it started off with a bang. It, it definitely did. It, it was still a bit of a somewhat rocky start but it was more than enough to really get you in there and go yeah fucks yeah star wars comics we're gonna do this thing we're starting from the ground up again new characters new plots no green rabbits no green rabbits they actually did uh recently make i think um a can I don't know what it was. It was like some special issue or whatever that has the green rabbits or something it was supposed to be like the issue that never was in the original comics or something stupid like that. I bought it, but I haven't even read it yet. I don't, I don't know why they did it. 
nor do I know why there are green rabbits in the comics. Uh, I don't know, man. I think there was just a writer back in the early 80s who had nothing better going on. Well, yeah. Shit, man. But, um, yeah, so, you know, they're, along the way, they're, like, what would you say for the first, like, arc or whatever were, like, some of the main highlights, like, comics-wise or events-wise in the story? I mean, if we kind of take the first arc as being all the way from the beginning to, like, Screaming Citadel before the second arc started. Yeah, we'll count. We'll say that. Or... I mean, there's not, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There there is no real connection. There's the Rebel Jail arc where they have a sun prison, which is pretty freaking sweet. Yeah, like the Rebel Jail arc I think was the most memorable um arc in the series and I don't know, something about the sun prison was just kind of cool, you know. It's just it's a sun prison. You can't you can't go wrong. No, and one of the new characters they have in the series is Dr. Afra and she has her own side comic as well which is actually pretty decent because she's kind of like one of those like out for herself kind of characters is she good is she bad you know going all over the place and deceiving everyone and she's also with uh um an evil killer version of c3po and r2d2 basically and yeah she's like this whole time i never really thought of her as a character with much personality she's just kind of there a lot and um Again, her her own thing is fine. Like, there's like probably like I don't know, ten billion different side stories and and stuff like that that they got with these comics. But sometimes they all connect, like the Darth Vader and Doctor Aphra and main series. Yeah, the main it's basically there's the main series, there's the Vader series, and then some other stuff. And Aphra spun off the Vader series, which kind of was a spin off of the main series to begin with. Yeah. So I only I've seen Afra a couple times in the main series because that's the only one I read. So I don't really know anything about her other than what you have kind of just described. Yeah, like there's there's um, I the main series or I should say her side series is good at fleshing her character out a little more and giving more history and stuff like that. And um, I also like that it gives more um. Like, the more side series you read, the more in-depth this actual story feels. And the Vader one was good at that. And then they redid it, or they started it again. So it took yeah. place after episode three, and that's when it got really good. That's actually, I really like that part with the Darth Vader comics. Right, so there was Vader, and, and there, there was the Darth Vader, and then there was yeah. Darth Vader, Lord of the Sith or something? What's oh, it was, the, no... It was Darth Vader, and then they started again. Darth Vader. Like they didn't even change the name. They didn't add a subtitle. Oh, I thought, I thought they changed the name. No. At some point. So the thing is, I have each issue. So if if you misplace, like you could like scramble the order of these and put issue seven of the second run into the first one, and you wouldn't even know if you were just looking because the the logo and everything is the same. Like I they, see. They could have just like called it something else of a subtitle, but they just kept calling it Darth Vader, even though it took place like before, like after. Again, it's basically, and it was a good arc. It was a good like 25 issues, I think that's what it was, where it was like after episode three, where he's just an amateur and he has to go kill the last remnants of the Jedi, basically, and just go take everything out like that. So there, there was, it was actually pretty good because it was like amateur Darth Vader who's getting his ass kicked and stuff like that. Yeah. So basically you got Darth Vader and then Darth Vader rises rides again. Yeah, pretty much. And now they have um Target Vader or Target Darth Vader, which is just a, a mini series about bounty hunters trying to kill him, including uh what the fuck is his name again? Dengar or something like that, who was in episode five, the the cloth. Dengar. Guy. Yeah. yeah. Everyone loves Dengar. Fan favorite. Yeah, like I don't know why. I mean, he was just kind of there, but <laughs> I thought the robot was cooler. <laughs> Whatever his name is, uh, IG88, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like he, he was pretty balling, but uh, and it's funny to think when they made the movie, like all these characters, like yeah, they had toys and stuff like that, but nobody would have thought anything much of them. Same with Bosk. Okay, man. So, I love Bosk. So, um, looking at it on Wikipedia. It does label the second run as Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. Okay, that's probably... from 2017 to 2018. And then it says Star Wars, Darth Vader will start in 2020. So we're going to have 
Oh, don't tell me Darth Vader runs. No. No. Yes. No. It's even more convoluted. No. Why do they... Like, it made sense what they were doing before. All they have to do is add a subtitle. So just if you have it issue by issue, and, you know, it's hard to get them mixed up, like... But still, like, it's like... And imagine if you were just, like, somebody who collected um, individual issues and you were, like, going through a comic box somewhere and you saw that or something and you, you wouldn't know which run is which. Yeah. it's That's why I don't... That's why I like the way they've been doing the regular Star Wars ones where it's just continuous. Yeah, also, exactly. It helps that if you open up one of the comic... One of, like, the uh, collected graphic novels, it will have a little timeline of that run itself saying oh. these are the graphic novels you need to buy including the annuals which we've had two of so far and I'm expecting I would expect another one to come around yeah um, there is another one there is? Uh, or is there? yeah annual number three I haven't read it yet because cool. the annuals are always as the as far as the uh, graphic novels go are kind of unto themselves so the first one was called Vader Down, and the second one was Screaming Citadel. Oh, you were counting those as the annuals? Because I meant like the actual um, right. like no, little those one-offs. Always, those contain the annuals. Oh, okay. But it's like, it's yeah, because both of those, Vader Down and Screaming Citadel, were the cross-issue events. Right. Where it was, okay, so that and then those include the annuals. Okay, right. nice. You get okay. the annual, and then there's the cross-issue thing. Okay, yeah, because they haven't done the cross issue one since Screaming said yeah. it all. And and th- yeah, those are the cross issue ones, which are a story unto themselves, and then they get on with the plot. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a lot easier to see when you're staring at the graphic novels stacked up in a row like I am. Well, and the graphic novels uh, make a lot of things easier. When well, I have a lot of problems with with comics, but we'll talk about that towards the end of the show. But. Um, yeah, like I said, when it comes to the side series, like the Darth Vader one is consistently good to read. But before then, you know, they they had like I don't know, fucking like every character. They had Chewbacca, which was lame. They had Lando, which kind of let me down. Darth Maul, which I actually really liked. I thought it was it was angsty, but it was cool. It was a story about how he like captures a Jedi apprentice or whatever, and they like have their own thing going. It was it was actually pretty good. And the Han Solo one was by far my favorite one. I think that's actually really worth reading because Never it, got it around just, to that guy. it's just a good, it's a, it's like uh five issues or something like that. And it's just, it's uh, the star Wars version of red line. It's a space oh. race. Oh yeah. So it's I cool as fuck. I've mentioned that before. I, the other ones I've picked cool. up, I read, I read the Kanan comics. Those were pretty good. If you were into like rebels and shit. Okay. Uh, I read the Thrawn comic, but that was just a recap of the first Thrawn novel again, so oh. you can skip one or the other. So does, also, that, does that mean that um, Hair to the Empire is canon now? Oh no, the new Thrawn novel that's just oh, called Thrawn. Of course. <laughs> How uh, foolish unfortunately, we're not getting Hair to the Empire. No word yet on what Thrawn has been up to i know the other two of the novels come out i've not read them yet i'm currently in my let the star wars novels build up phase i don't even know what goes on in any of these like novels and shit like that there's a lot of like tie-ins which are fun yeah yeah but that's how it goes i like the uh and it's not really like anything big but it's like little things like a character's name will get mentioned or whatever okay yeah and I think we both read the Captain Phasma miniseries. We did, and that was rather nice. Yeah, it was. It was good to at least uh, give her a character. <laughs> you know, Cause at this point, I've read both the Captain Phasma uh, graphic novel and the her novel, which both actually fleshed the character out pretty well. Okay, well, it's it's a good thing that the movie didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, this um, is what this is what the extended universe is for, man. Yeah, and oh, oh, the comics too. There's the Poe Dameron series that finished. I read all of that, and it was actually pretty good. The art was consistently really good in the Poe Dameron ones. Like whoever does the art for that should be doing it for the main series because uh, the main series traditionally looks ugly, as we've commented on many times. It kind of does, yeah. 
like it has those faces that look too realistic like they're just traced from movie stills and sometimes when they're trying to be expressive it just looks gross just looks nasty (laughs) and like i think the funny thing is with all these comics when you read them the greatest test of the artist is how well they can draw darth vader because you know he's not exactly easy to draw yeah there's there's some great vader stuff going on oh yeah and then some other ones that are just like oh what the fuck but i think i've never seen so many cool um pictures of vader ever as there are in these comics like there's just it's like it's like it's a challenge to see how cool of a splash page they can make of him you know really honestly if they're not trying to draw a face and specifically if they're not trying to draw a face of a character who appeared in the movies because then they just kind of like i don't know trace an image from the actor yeah it, it's basically weird. it seems like, like it because it's like the guys at the actual movie characters look terrible and then mm. the people then humans who are made up are better and yeah. then the aliens are better than that and then darth vader just explodes everybody oh yeah so it's weird because like i wouldn't say that the artist is bad it's just that it just is it's ugly and uh the poe dameron series is good because it was a little more stylized and it was colored exceptionally well i don't think the main series is colored well that's also a problem i have is sometimes the coloring is a little funky and, and it makes the faces and stuff look bad like with the lighting and shading and all that yeah, i saw some of the poe dameron stuff it looks really nice it i'm is. just not i'm just not interested enough in that part of the star wars lore to start buying the comics yeah like, I, and... it's part of the reason i want to get into the darth vader stuff is because i really like that crazy force shit more than anything Oh, it's, it's cool. And yeah, like the Poe one, like I got it because it was the first of this, uh, the sequel trilogy stuff that they made. And that's when I was still actually like a little optimistic about the franchise. So I thought, okay, cool. I'll have to get on that. And, and it was worth it. But um, I think really the Han Solo one is the one to read just because it's cool. I mean, it's a fucking space race. That's cool. <laughs> but to get back to what I was saying earlier, for me, another one of the highlights was uh, the Yoda arc, like the little. That, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, there's an arc that just basically just follows Yoda back during the Clone Wars yeah. times. It's kind of stuck on a planet doing some force stuff. He's fighting like rock things and doing force shit. Like it was cool. It, it was just like it was neat to have that little side story. Same with any of the Obi Wan from Tatooine. Little bits were good as well. I really miss that, and it makes me really look forward to uh, the upcoming blah, 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 Obi-Wan show. Yeah, because it shows you that there's potential. Like, There's like a part where he fights Boba Fett, and it was cool because it would be like little, like little bits from his journal and stuff that they would bring up. And every now and then there'd be an issue that focus, like a one-shot issue that focuses on his Tatooine adventures. Like, There's a lot of potential there, you know? It definitely is. I mean, it's there's a there's a lot of aspects in at this point in the Star Wars universe that have not been ex- definitely not explored by the movies, yeah. not explored by the comics, and not explored by the novels. Because ever since the reboot, they've been focusing basically exclusively from um, a New Hope to episode seven there's been a little bit more post episode seven and a smattering of a few things pre episode four really yeah um and co- even and... within that it's mostly what are the main characters doing yeah and like there there was like a little side series about obi-wan and anakin's adventures that they just talked about in the prequels like how they went on all these crazy adventures and stuff I do want to get that one. That looks fun. Yeah, and it was neat just to um, give an idea. Like, what what was it in Attack of the Clones where they talk about all this crazy shit in the elevator? Was that the scene? Oh, yeah, that one. It it was... <laughs> yeah, it, we can talk about a lot of stuff. 
about what the prequels did wrong and that the extended universe ultimately redeems in a way. Because, mm-hmm. like, one of the things that remained canon was the Clone Wars TV show, which is getting a final season, finally. I That might be out already, I don't know. But, like, it fleshed out a lot of, like, an actual character for Anakin and Obi-Wan together, you know? Yeah. It's, it's pulling... The extended universe is continually pulling the weight that the movies dropped. Right. And actually um, seemingly to making cool stories out of all this stuff. More yeah, so than the there, movies. There's cool there's cool stories to be had and like depths to explore. And I'm still waiting for the day where one of these comics says, fuck it, we're going to do something in the Star Wars universe that has nothing to do with any of the characters you know about. That'd be some wild shit. How would they make a movie like that too? I don't know. They're, they've still shot around some ideas for Old Republic stuff. Oh, but you yeah. know eventually that's always going to tie back into the Sith or whatever. I mean, yeah, why not just good. give me the story of like some random ass dude just like trying to get by in the universe? Yeah, that'd be pretty interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, I think uh, got that. And if we talk about now like the second arc of the comics, which I guess started with volume seven, issue 38 and all that, they kind of um, it seems like they got more focused with the second arc, I would say. Yeah, they finally pinned down a single writer whose name is something Gillen. It is Kieran Gillen, who yeah. worked on a little bit. He did the Rebel Jail arc, and or was at least involved in the Rebel Jail arc, and a few other things. But he, he think he was the first became lead writer on Screaming Citadel. Okay. And then yeah. was basically after that, got the kind of do stuff. So... He's really had a strong run of an idea. I think he had in his head of what he wanted to do. And now he's stepping down and let someone else take the helm. So hopefully they'll get someone good. Yeah, because sure. there, there are a lot of, like, again, it felt like the story really went together. Like, um, in, in Volume 9, there was a lot of cool moments that felt like they had great impact and stuff like that. And a lot of turning points and stuff was like, ooh, stuff's happening. And it all yeah, came like, together really well in Volume 11. Yeah, you didn't really know what was go- quite what was going to happen in 7 and 8 yet, but 11 really came together and went, oh, this is going to be a thing. Cool. Yeah, for sure. And there were a lot of cool moments along the way, like uh, in Volume 10 when they went to that planet and they were stuck on there for a while and... There's all this, um, I, I guess you say, plot twists and stuff happening. Oh yeah, that was like, it was a cool like bottle episode of a comic book. Yeah, it's it's you know these comics also are better. Even though I I get them, uh, I go to the comic store almost every week, every two weeks, and get my comics. But it is better to read them one after the other just to take it all in at once. Yeah, that's why I really prefer the graphic novels. I don't. One is just the has the oh, I got to go to the fucking comic store, especially when there's not one really available to me. Yeah, fair enough. I couldn't enough. tell you where the no closest actual comic store is mm-hmm. to me. And uh, So I, it's just easy to go to the regular bookstore and, you know, you know, comic. Yeah, and, and I think I'll talk about this now. Ever since, uh, I would say, 2015... I've been regularly getting comics because we got two comic stores over here. And in theory, I like the idea of supporting the local business. It's especially pushed in a place like, I don't know if over there that's pushed, but especially in my city, that's super pushed of support local shit and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm very much behind supporting local stuff. But uh, as it stands, my current co- uh, residence of Kansas City isn't like super in on that yeah at least kansas city kansas i should say there's like Mm -hmm. local chains which i i frequent but there's no really any like good like this is the only one we got stores in my uh immediate vicinity you know without driving to the other side of town which in america is a ways and yeah like for us we got the only comic stores in between winnipeg and southern ontario so um you know, there's a that's a lot of space, by the way. There's a lot of space, yeah. Like, I and, mean, I can I can go to, I guess I can go to the vintage shop and they have comics, but they're always usually like old stuff. A little, 
a little older. They're not like the most up to date. They get new issues every week, but yeah. And you know, I like the experience of going to the comic store. I like to look at stuff and get stuff and, you know, there's something charming about it, even if in these places sometimes the prices are shit on other things and whatnot. But it's the thing I found is I've wasted a lot of money on comics and a lot of money on comics that I don't want. So just recently I went through my whole bin because like the thing is it's hard as fuck to store comics because nobody has number one comic boxes are kind of expensive like. I don't know if you want to get like a box that houses like a hundred to two hundred issues. It's like twenty bucks, which I guess is, doesn't sound that bad. But I don't want to buy a bunch of those. Where am I going to put them? And yeah, like that's what I'm running into because I I keep buying these comics and I guess you know each one is fairly thin, so it's easy to slot it in on the shelf. But then you run out but of space. But every once in, every once in a while, I'm like oh, got to move another book up the shelf. This is yeah, and like huh. for me, like you know and. I like to have, uh, I like to organize my stuff in a way that it looks dense, but everything has a place. So I love, for instance, uh, manga, how it looks on a shelf because the numbers are lining up and the spines are matching and it just looks aesthetically pleasing. It does. That, that's one of the great things about it. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind just having a single giant one that's yeah, like, like, here's all of it. You know, my a regular. Uh, uh, Rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah, I personally have a. I hate bookshelves because the books will never fit. They'll always be like a different size. They're always going to be this. If you can't put books of the same topic together or something, they're going all over the place. I like when things are nicely organized and everything's by size and shit like that. You got like all the big books. And then if you got like magazines or something like that, or in my case, I get like Dengeki G's magazine. It's like an anime magazine every now and then, a Japanese one. So like the spines are like thicker on those. So you put that there, but then you get like other normal magazines, like who the fuck even stores magazines where you're supposed to put them. See, and, like, the only magazines I could have ever imagined storing are the old National Geographics, because they're again basically a graphic novel thing, where you still have a a squared off spine that you can stack next to each other. Yeah, like that's nice. Like for me, I have a shit ton of issues of Mad Magazine starting from 2005 to when I whenever I stopped reading it I think like 2 years ago 2 3 years ago. God, that was and, probably that probably meant we were reading some of the same mad magazines. Oh yeah, like I love mad magazine. Like I I thought it was like the greatest thing ever. I started with the Fantastic 4 issue because I wanted to get the Revenge of the Sith one, although I was too late. But the Fantastic 4 issue was the one that actually had the spoof of the movie in it. Like the actual when they did their old movie spoofs and stuff like that. Yeah, we definitely had my brother and I because we were you know twins, and we had shared everything. But we mm -hmm. definitely had the Phantom Menace issue. Oh yeah, I well, I just remember that their jokey name for Mace Windu was Mace Window, and he had a bottle of Windex. Oh, he has to have the Windex like that. It's so obvious, but it, it, you just got to do it, you know. Yeah, and Darth Maul wanted to go shopping. Also, oh, no. C-3PO was made of literal was actually spaghetti and meatballs, which was fun. Oh yeah, see, I Mad Magazine used to have really good humor and stuff like that. It was it was fun, but it's it's like I said, I my main point here is I ended up donating a, a bag full of comics that I'd been getting over the last few years just because I didn't I don't want them. And the thing is, you can't sell them because who the fuck cares about like all these random like Vampirella and Red Sonia series and stuff like that? Like I'm oh, I'm not my gonna. God. Do you know what I found out the other day? What's that? Do you know who, in real life, Vampirella, the actress? Are you, you talking about? Are you talking about Elvira? No, no, Vampirella. Oh, not Vampirella, Vampira. Oh, who was pre Elvira? Elvira. Right. Oh, Vampiro. Vampira. Pyra. Yep. Not to be confused. Oh, okay. Not to be confused with Vampirella. No. Vampira is basically. She. Yeah. She's Elvira before Elvira is the thing. She invented the gimmick. Or rather, oh, uh, the Adam, Douglas Adams of the Adams family invented. Not Douglas Adams. The guy who wrote the Adams family made Morticia. And before Morticia was Morticia, she based her character, Vampira, off of Morticia. And later uh -huh. on, you get Elvira. But she's... she was. 
She's Finnish American. Hmm. Yes, but she was also James Dean's best friend. Oh, really? Yeah, for like the last couple of years there. Weirdly enough. Go figure. Yeah, but that's I've never even heard of her until right now. Yeah. That's why I got confused. Like I thought you were talking about Elvira at first. I thought you were confusing the two. No. But um, yeah, like I have all these random comics that I just kept buying, but I never actually cared about reading. And it's like you can't you can't just sell them back to the comics. Like no one's gonna buy them, you know. So I was just like, I'll just donate them, whatever, just to have space and stop doing this. Like I just focus, like because I read the Star Wars ones and the Harley Quinn ones, which are, well, the Harley Quinn comic is currently on like a really shit arc right now, where it's like um it keeps doing like the trials of Harley Quinn and it introduces all this just just dumb shit that I don't like when when it just like I don't know like stupid supernatural elements and alternate world and i don't know although that that comic it has its moments where it does some interesting things and i liked what they were doing with the archie comic but i think that they stopped that for a while like the like archie like actual like not read not like grocery store archie but more of a um not riverdale either more of i just say i hope it's not take. fucking riverdale see hear- the thing is it's not grocery store Archie, and it's not Riverdale. It's like um, Archie it's, zombies. No, it's like a normal looking Archie. That's uh, like that's like grocery store Archie, but for a slightly, somewhat older audience, but not like River. Right. It's con- it's confusing. So just like to the regular Archie comics. Yeah, but like it's drawn more realistic. We'll put it that way. Okay, more of a realistic drawing. I see. And I think I think it's actually like a pretty tight series, you know. It's not yeah, bad so at all. I, 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 the Archie comics are surprisingly real written. You would not expect, you know, that the Archie comics, the thing you saw in the Reader's Digest or whatever growing up, would be one of the some of the best written comics out there. But they really are. No, you expect stuff like that to just be like trash, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think that just comes from the fact that you have a, a property that's so old, and yeah. so many people have been ins- inspired by it over the years. Man, imagine if they made fucking Family Circus like this. Like if they made like a gritty, a gritty remake of Family Circus. <laughs> just wait. In five years, they're going to announce the family. For the no, CW. Hold up. Who even likes Family Circus? Like to me, it's always. I liked Family like, Circus as a kid. They it, had some it, good ones. It pissed me off. I was like, "This kid's dumb. He's he's a he's a, he's an idiot." <laughs> right, but you know, they had some good gimmicks. Yeah, but I, I was just like, I don't know. It irrationally bothered me, I guess, compared to the other comics. Like, I mean, there's some other ones that what was it like Blondie or whatever, with like the married uh, couple one. Yeah, Blondie was great. Dagwood, he's a yeah. he eats big sandwich. Have you <laughs> and, ever had a Firehouse Subs? You know those no, guys? No, no. Fire, okay, so Firehouse Subs is a is a is a sub chain, you know, sandwiches that uh, famously is a like they employ a lot of like ex-firemen and stuff. Okay. But they have a sandwich called the Dagwood, and it's excellent. Is it large and in charge? All of their sandwiches are large. Oh, I I gotta add. I don't think I said on the podcast, but a few months ago. I had Jimmy John's and it was actually like really good. It's fine. See, you say it's fine because like you're you're used to having it. You're you're used to not just having Subway as your choice of, of I sub. I like Subway more than f- Jimmy John's. Really? I fully do because you can get like hot stuff. Oh. Well, I suppose with Subway, you can, like, customize your order and stuff a little more. You can customize it more. They have more options. And, yeah. frankly, I, I, I really love a meatball sub. I'll be honest. I love mm. a meatball sub, and you cannot, cannot uh, okay. get one of those at the, Jimmy John's. My rant about meatball subs are, like, you take a bite, and, like, either, like, you eat the whole meatball, or, like, the meatball's coming out, or... You know, it's hard to get like a good bite, you know, because it's like something's going to happen. See, but this is also a reason that Firehouse is actually a superior sub because they will heat all of their subs. 
And does that prevent this meatball fiasco? Well, yeah, because you can get any sub hot. Okay, that's that's so, interesting. Yeah, say so if you want to get your, uh, you know, Italian sandwich, you can get the heat. You know, the like Subway would. You get the bread and the cheese and the meat all warm and toasty, and then you get your veggies on there, and then it's yours. That's pretty spicy. It is pretty spicy. <laughs> Oh, fucking subs but i think the main point of what i was trying to say is storing comics is annoying and buying shit that you don't actually care about reading is dumb so don't waste your money on stuff like that is what i found out just because it just became a thing we're just to buy it to buy it you know yeah I, I i try never to buy things just to buy them i i really want to cut down on my spending on like my total like use because I recognize that one day I'm going to die and I don't want to like thrust a bunch of extra bullshit onto my descendants. Well, you can just you like uh, denote in, instead of having a will where there's actual good stuff, you can just denote who gets the garbage and people can fight about who has to take all this shit. I, I don't know. I feel like I just want to have it gone by the time I die. I'd rather not accrue it to begin with. I need to, like, pull Marie Kondo. Yeah, but it'd be fun because everyone would be like, no, I don't want to take all that stupid shit. No. But you, like, leave it to people in your will so they feel like they have to take it because you're, like, dead and they want to, like, respect your wishes, but you're just giving them all your shit that you don't never even cared about. Yeah, I I don't want to have it to begin with because then I'll have to deal with it for a while. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I just also, was... I don't know about you. I grew up in a house where there was never enough storage, so I think maybe that imprinted something upon my psyche. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and when you think about it, sometimes comics are kind of silly. They are kind of like, silly. Oh, I don't. I don't mean like comics themselves. I mean having like single issues. You know. Yeah, and, and I think and that's then... the reason I never really got on board with like comic books growing up and stuff because it, it's you know literally I mean? like less content and it's like it takes up so much space just to have all these little little issues and then on the boards and everything like that and uh yeah it, it comes up with the spacing and the boards and also the fact that you'd need a new i don't know how much a comic book cost in the 90s a dollar maybe yeah, and I think maybe every I'm, single week, I might consider just not buying comics anymore and just going for the graphic novels or something at this point. But it's hard because like there's something inside of me that's like, say with the Star Wars comics, I'm like, well, I have this many, I might as well keep going so I can just keep getting that number up. You know, there's something inside me that's like, gotta have them all since I have this many. See, I find that the only real way to do it is to just bite that bullet and go, I'm going to do it now. Because, like, for a long time, with these new Star Wars novels coming out, I would get them as soon as they came out so I could be as up-to-date as possible. But that meant buying a bunch of hardback. And hardbacks are always more expensive than the paperbacks. And And they're heavy. and, And, like, paperbacks are just better, like... I don't know. Like, I just like reading paperbacks more, you know? Paperbacks are great. I hate the new, like, format they're in, but paperbacks oh. are still better th- than hardbacks. Yeah, Have you gotten a paperback like... recently? No, I haven't. There are not any, um, like, thicker, if you're looking at them, like, face on. They're no wider, but they're taller. Oh. So I assume that means on a shelf, they'll take up less space. Yeah. But they're also more uncomfortable to read. And maybe it's just me and the size of my hands. Because on like an old school paperback, I could pop my thumb in between it and it'd be perfect. Man, I love those. I know I do that. And like the top closes back up again. I love those old style ones. But like, yeah, hardcover books, like I hate them because you always got to take the cover off. Like when you're reading it. You know, you you always got to take that cover off and you got to hope that it has like a, a decent picture inside so you don't look like a buffoon. You know, so a lot of these books you'll be reading them and it'll just be like a, a standard like red or something inside. So it just yeah, looks yeah. like a generic Hard, book. Hardback needs to go to the, need to like roll back to the days of like everything's just like 
printed directly on the really cool hardback stuff. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, those sleeves get ruined so easily, you know? They do. I, I can't tell you how many hardback sleeves I have ruined over the years. But at the same time, the one advantage hardbacks really have is the fact that when you, if you're reading them, you can open them all the way up and you won't destroy the spine. That's true. What we really need is a hardback the size of a paperback. Now that is an idea I can get behind. Sounds without, like uh... without a sleeve, just printed on the cardboard or whatever they make paperback oh, hardbacks yeah. out of. I assume it's cardboard of some description. Yeah, something like that. Eh? Well, uh, sounds like you're quite the inventor. Why not? Uh... Do people still use uh, Kickstarter? Or is it all on Patreon and shit nowadays? I kickstarted something not too long ago, actually. Okay. Yeah, they use Kickstarter. I think it's the difference is Patreon is for creators, ongoing things, and yeah. like Patreon is for a specific project. That's yeah, that's what Kickstarter is. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kickstarted a card game, which I will be receiving sometime in March ish. Tight. Tight. Where someone is making like this crazy kiss book. I think they wouldn't put on Kickstarter or something. I wonder if that came out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. It's it's always hard because like sometimes Kickstarter shit's just gonna fall through. Sometimes it won't. And that's you have to guess. It's the gamble of things. But um yeah, I don't know. Like again, said a lot about that in Star Wars comics and all. Is there anything else you have to say about them? I will ask a question. Yes. What is the one Star Wars co- comic you would like to see? Um, like if there was going to be a new spin-off spin-off. series, like what would you want it to be about? Oh man, Grievous. Like in 2005 when there was like one of those like I guess young reader or something books. And it was giving you like the history of Grievous and shit, like how he was like the commander, and then he like he got like destroyed, and they ripped all his guts and shit out and made him into like the biomechanical robot thing. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because I know they did recently. They did a short graphic novel series of like heroes of the Republic, villains of the Republic. Yeah, I saw the ads for that. I, I I flipped to the villains of the Republic one. It was fine. Yeah, like, but... g- give us, like, a good Grievous story. Like, back in um, 2002, they had a series that I still have and I, and I love, and I got at the time, Django Fett Open Season, which was kind of, like, I early Django Fett one. story. Yeah, and, and for, for, like, when I read it, when I was four or five, it was really edgy and stuff. I was like, oh, my God, this, Odd like, blood four and shit. five, that's so wrong. Oh, I, I was five. Or, no, I, I... was... No, 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 no. That is wrong because I was five the, or six. The fact you were on the internet at all. Oh no, I, I, well, I mean, I was to a limited capacity, but I got, I got the comic of this. Yeah, I definitely remember seeing that because I, it came out around the same time as I forget the name of it, but I have a series of comic of Star Wars, old school Star Wars comics about basically James Bond, but what if he was an Imperial spy? Okay. But I think I'm I I I don't have them on my hand at the moment. But I'm fairly sure there is an ad for uh, Django Fett open season in there. Yeah, that's the other thing about graphic novels: no ads. Yeah, because okay, you know how annoying ads in comics are. Like holy shit, and they deliberately do it. They deliberately do it so when you flip the page and your eyes about to ooh, what's coming next to this juicy moment? Ad. Yep, I remember I had a like an Avengers co- like one shot thing as a kid. And I was so confused why there was like commercials for like Porsches in the middle of it. Well, nowadays in Marvel comics is usually just advertising other Marvel properties or something. Like it's never stuff like that. It's still a pain in the ass. Like I know yeah, the graphic is. novels have stuff like they're advertising other no- graphic novels at the begin, like the beginning and the end. Yeah. Not during the comic. They- Exactly. You know, it comes after, like, here's all the alternate, like, uh, cupboards. Like, at least, like, uh, Dynamite Comics, they do something where they put all their ads directly at the end of the comic. So they're they're a little nicer about that. 
Yeah, I mean, one thing if they're all at the end or all at the beginning or, like, all in the center, so you have, like, a nice little, like, you know, um, mid-show break. Yeah. Something. I think that's what they used to do with uh, Bionicle comics. I don't remember those having ads, but it's been a long time. They had ads for, like, Bionicles. and. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Bionicle comics were amazing, man. Don't you? They, they, they there was some good, like the Takanuva issue that was like reflective gold. And don't get um, me wrong, I, I, I read those for a long time. They were good until 2006, and then I don't know what the fuck happened. There, were, it had like the shittiest art for like the Paraka story and all that shit. Like the art was just disgusting. The Ignition comics, like oh my god, they were terrible. And same with 2007 and the last few years of bionicle comics were miserable and shit garbage absolute trash yeah they kind of were and i i lost i lost track of it i mean i, I hit high school so i was like i don't care anymore man but well, yeah i'm again, gonna this be is... an adult i'm gonna like girls and zombies girls and yeah. zombies not girls and cars no no girls add. and zombies that's what nerdy kid that's what uh slightly nerdy kids in high school and my age did we like girls and zombies. All yeah. slightly nerdy. All like guys in high school like girls, unless you're gay. But you it's know, a difference. What do you if like? If you're nerdy, if you're nerdy, you like zombies more than cars. Yeah, it's, it's either there's two kinds of people in this world: girls and cars, or girls and zombies. Yeah, kinda. But you know that is because zombies were the thing. Yeah. That, you know the the Left for Dead era. Ah, oh, Left Left for Dead was new. I remember reading the entirety of Left for Dead in my best friend's uh like upstairs living room space thing. My friend's uh, house was weird, but like just like one morning after a sleepover, I just like broke him out and just like read the whole thing. Read? Yeah, read it. Do you read comics? Love Left for Dead. I. I, it was it was pretty good. I liked it. Oh. Again, the zombie bubble had not burst yet. I, oh, I just didn't know they had a comic series of the game. I I could punch you. Hold up. This oh, is... not Left for Dead. Walking Dead. Oh. <laughs> I've had a few too many. I've had some in a long day. Okay. Yeah, no, the Walking Dead comics. Yeah. Probably after a night of playing Left for Dead, if we're okay. being entirely honest with ourselves. Okay. Although I'm sure I'm positive there was a Left for Dead comic. Maybe, but I was thoroughly confused by that. But now we're good. Now it makes sense. There was 100 percent a Left for Dead comic book. Well, it, it has to exist, doesn't it? All things must exist. Not but, all um, things. Some Something things. shouldn't exist. True enough. What what do you think you would really like to see? I mean, I think you kind of already mentioned that you'd like it if they did stuff with no um, known characters and all that, and just random I, people. I would like to see that. I would love to see some like old Republic stuff, like completely, like still related to like Jedi and Sith, because that doesn't get old. But like, I don't want any reference to some chosen one or any like thing like that. I don't want young Yoda. I just want like. Old, old school. Because, like, they kind of allude to it in, like, this Vader comic of, you know, Vader digs up, a, you know, the holocron of some long-dead Sith Lord and sees what he's about. You know? Yeah. I'd like to see what that dude's about. Give me him. Give me some crazy lightsaber colors while you're at it. Yeah, like, let's, let's get some wild shit up in there. <laughs> wild but, shit. Um, yeah, I guess that's all we got to say for this, uh episode talking about comics in general and star wars and all that kind of stuff yeah it's christmas just sit back relax listen to us the pr- let's, let's listen to us prattle on that's what we do and that's what we're gonna keep giving you on the 12 days of christmas so tune in next time for another exciting episode of crimbo action in your ear yeah